previously on Shattered. Chris is the first to fall asleep. I understand how the work and all that sort of thing. Salma begins to show signs of nodding off. I'm just like really wary of the tiredness. Just the eyes. Eyes are quite tired. And ten are reduced to nine as Ellen is the first one to be kicked off the show. Okay, Ellen, you need to get 19 or below. 3,176 P's. You are 694 P's out. Welcome to Shattered. One week where nine people now face the ultimate test of stamina, life without sleep. Only one person will be declared the Shattered winner and could walk away, could, with £100,000 if they're still awake on Saturday. Our contestants are in the lab behind me. They arrived here two days ago and have now been sleep deprived for 63 days. After last night's show and while you were going to bed, they faced their third night without any sleep. They were finally allowed two hours sleep at three o'clock today for health and safety reasons. And for the rest of the week, they're only going to get one hour sleep a day, which is nothing. So, let's meet the nine. We have Claire M. Now, she's a mother of two and proving to be fairly feisty, it has to be said. We have Claire S who's a police cadet. She describes herself as bubbly and she seems to be doing just fine. We have Christopher. Ah, Christopher. Now, he started off very lively, but has he peaked too soon? He's been struggling today. We've got Craig. Now, uh, he said earlier that he's had enough, so it, could he be the first one to walk out? We have Dean. He's been exercising frantically to try and keep himself awake, but is he going to exhaust himself if he's not careful? We have Jimmy, Jimmy's ex-army. He once spent three days digging trenches. We have Jonathan. As a psychiatrist, still, as yesterday, quietly determined, but as yesterday, maybe that's a strategy. And we have Lucy. She was in trouble yesterday, but she seemed to have pulled it together today. And we have Salma, the fitness instructor, finding it very tough. Yesterday, she could hardly keep her eyes open. They are battling against each other to win the prize, but remember, they have to work as a team to make sure they have a prize fund to win in the first place, because every time someone falls asleep outside their allotted hour-long nap the price run drops by one thousand pounds and it's already looking pretty dicey we lost our first participant last night in the last night's elimination challenge and there's a challenge every night they get simpler as the week goes on but harder to do when you're sleepy the person who leaves the show and walks away from the chance of winning the prize that's what happened since ellen left last night take a look <laughs> last night in the first live elimination show Chris, Claire S, Ellen and Jonathan battled it out for survival. Let's count peas. Previously, we tested their patience by making them count peas. And that seemingly meaningless task was to become their key to their survival. I'm now going to test your memory. All I need you to do is write down the number of peas in your jar. Whoever gets furthest away from the correct total will leave tonight. To Safety back. returning from the comfort of the lab were Chris... <laughs> Claire S, you're safe. <laughs> and finally, Jonathan. Ellen, <laughs> so sorry. Don't worry about it. At least I'm honest, I guess. Absolutely. I lost concentration and I just said I guess. Ellen's poor attention had cost her dear, but for the others, the result was inevitable. When they did say the peas, I kind of, like, knew that Ellen being there, that she'd go out, and that made me really sad. Oh, but right. I was like, oh, You see, no. I, I didn't have a clue about what Ellen had done. Well, it's, it's, Ellen it's completely sad, lost it's count. It's the group's second night in the lab and have now been without sleep for 41 hours. In the early hours of the night, the body's natural rhythms start to drop in preparation for a night shut-eye. For our participants, this spells danger. So, to keep them stimulated, they have an hour-long night school. Tonight, Britain's leading expert on lying, Professor Wiseman, is going to school our contestants in the art of lying, a skill that may yet prove useful as the competition hots up. Good. So we're going to be talking about lying, and more importantly, how to detect lies. We're going to be finding out who's a good liar, who's not a good liar, and so on. What liars tend to do is look you straight in the eye. This idea of sort of looking away and stuff isn't true. And the liars are actually maintaining quite a lot of eye contact. 
They also tend to be quite static. They don't move around so much. So when you're telling the truth, you're kind of quite animated about it. When you're lying, you're thinking through the lie. It's quite difficult, so you tend not to um, uh, move around very much. So those are the kind of key signals. They're taking it in turns to try and fool the others with a fib. So what uh, Jonathan's just seen is a picture, and below the picture, either the word truth or lie. Mm -hmm. If he's seen the word truth, he's going to describe as accurately as possible the picture. If he's seen the word lie, he's going to describe a completely different picture. The picture is of a red fire extinguisher. Um, lie. Which is lie. of the water variety. He squints when he lies and he looks up. Okay, <laughs> and he looks up to his right, which means he's actually uh, um, creating something rather than accessing memory. Okay. okay, what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll yeah, take uh, a bit of a vote on it. So, hands up for the lie again. Two, three, so you... So, okay, thank you. So, the vote is for a lie. So, uh, the answer... Jonathan was an impressive blagger with an extremely controlled and even delivery. Claire M now has to state who is the best-looking person. Is she lying? It's difficult, though, isn't it? Because it is. male and female. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's your choice, though. <laughs> I'd say the best-looking person here was Chris. Okay. And why would you say that? Well, nice-looking boy. Is she lying or telling us the truth about Chris? So we'll do a hands up. Hands up thinks she's telling us the truth. Lying. Mm -hmm. oh, <gasps> extremely good. I'm because hurt. in fact. Yeah. Uh, Hard luck, Chris. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. It's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, it was so, Craig, by the way. Sorry? It was Craig. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 43 hours without sleep and counting. Mental faculties are beginning to slow. But our participants are still keeping their eyes on the £100,000 prize. Dean's already thinking ahead to the very final stages. When it comes to the last two, I'm, I'm not holding any prisoners. Okay. okay. It's fine. Right. <laughs> it's really interesting, actually. You could be going out tonight. It's really interesting that Dean is adamant that he will be in the final two. Yeah. Oh, he is. Mental attitude. It always has been, yeah. The only way I won't if I choose not to be. <laughs> we'll see. And I don't think you would do that. I don't think it's that much in your control. You may think it is, but it's not. I don't think yeah, do you want to bet on so that? So unpredicted. Today yeah. was so unpredictable. He, he just seemed to go on a bit about himself, about winning and, and all that. But, you know, it's cool. You know, he's, he's uh, quite a confident guy. But then, like I've always said, confidence turns into arrogance. Um, well, too much confidence. I haven't started playing the game yet, but when I do... We'll all know about it. You know, you want to be careful, you guys. Help. Why? How scary. But honestly, I, I had a dream I was, I was going to win the programme. And I don't, I never, I never remember my dreams. Yeah, well, dream, unless dreams they come true. Dream in the office. Seriously, I'm, I'm telling you something, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my destiny. Every night at three in the morning, when the body is at its lowest ebb, one of the participants has to face the ultimate endurance ordeal, a task custom-made to make staying awake as difficult as possible. Every time someone closes their eyes for ten seconds or more, the group are hit where it hurts. One thousand pounds is taken off their prize fund. So, deciding who is the fittest to face the challenge is vital. Tonight's You Snooze, You Lose challenge is a deep, relaxing massage. Mm -hmm. And it will last for one hour. Um, you've got five minutes to decide. Let's, let's roll the dice. Who feels fit to do oh, it? Change. Well, we have ended really it. Fun. I think I can do it. Okay, so who here thinks they could really do it and does feel like they can do really? it? Can yeah. we okay, okay. one, two, two, three. Oh, right, okay, we got three. Okay, so you guys are going to draw straws, okay? This is oh, well. not thing. Oh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Sorry, one minute. Seriously, seriously. One minute. Only, only go for it if you believe that's that what I'm you saying. can do it. Yeah. That's what yeah, I said. Because uh, that's a grand or, or maybe four grand no. to lose. I'm, I'm not going to. You roll. You make the decision. Highest, 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 highest wins, three, okay? Four, five, highest wins. Five. Five. One. You've got to roll six. Okay, Lucy, we're all behind you, Lord. Right, Lucy. Don't worry, bite your lip. Please, Lucy, go, Lucy. It doesn't matter. Lucy, listen. 99 balls of beer on the wall if you're allowed to sing. 
can do yeah, it. Just talk. You need to sound like a mad woman. I'm bound. <laughs> okay. Lisa, do you want to go into the bathroom? The massage takes place in the cosy confines of the relaxation room. <coughs> the rest of the group are banished to the medical room. Yeah. Good luck, Liz. He's on the sick one. Good luck, Liz. Might want to get Enjoy it. Massage is a fiendishly difficult challenge for two reasons. Obviously, there's the delicious sensual pleasure of a soothing, ultra-relaxing rubdown. Then there's the fact that there is no mental stimulation, nothing to take your mind off sleep. After any illegal sleeps, a klaxon will sound to indicate that a thousand pounds is lost from the prize fund. I feel really, really away. Yeah. So how long do you keep him up there for? I'm getting sleepy. Yeah, yeah. And me. Ten minutes. Yeah. It's a room this. Until your leg drops Imagine off. Imagine what it's like in there for him. you know yeah? it's long enough. Imagine what it's like in there. I'm not being funny yeah. or anything, but I think we should have picked the, sh the strongest person for it, the most away. She hasn't even got in there Yeah, yet. but who is the no, most No, but I'm, I'm just always saying, always like, it's all right, I'll give you an instance. Like, for rugby, yeah? You don't, you don't select your weakest player to take, you know, a kick for you, do you? You, you select the, yeah, the strongest player. We're seeing for a winger on his prop. But Dean, who is, our, who is the yeah, most away? Yeah, but essentially it's the weakest player anyway. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But to be honest, goes. it's going to be a bloody good it's massage. Yeah. yeah. So either Isn't way, it? Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah. It's going to be a bloody it's, expensive massage. Yeah, it's I reckon <laughs> that it will send her to sleep. <laughs> it's just a question of kind of keeping songs in your head and keeping thinking about other stuff. It was basically distracting yourself from what was going on. Lucy stays firm. It's Claire M in the medical room who seems to be suffering. Um, I can't tell. Well, at the end of the day, it's fair because we're all doing the same thing, <laughs> if you think about it that way. After an hour, Lucy emerges from the relaxation room triumphant. We just want to do it. Did you do it? Did you do it? Oh, my God. Lucy. I know. That is brilliant. Bring it on. Very interesting. So, what have we got? Well, Dean reckons he's got tactics, and his tactics seem to have been continuously exercising. Didn't have much faith in Lucy during the You Snooze, You Lose challenge, but she proved him wrong. Now, she's playing it very cool. So, what is the best approach? Um, Only time will tell. Really. What is certain, however, is that today things got weird. Now, they didn't quite hit the wall, but they're getting very close. See how close after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Shattered, where nine people are fighting the overwhelming urge just to get some sleep in an effort to claim the title of Britain's ultimate endurance champion. Now, one of them is going to be leaving in tonight's elimination challenge here in the elimination room in front of their friends, their family and their supporters. It's, it's fair to be said, I think, fairly full of themselves tonight. I'm impressed. OK, now, uh, they've now been sleep deprived for three very long days and two even longer nights. That's 63 hours, which is kind of like watching all three Lord of the Rings films seven times, back to back, with no breaks. And they still have to make it to Saturday. After a night of stimulation and fun, where most of them seem to be coping pretty well, there's a bit of a downward spiral. Here's what happened to them today. <laughs> Oh, you guys are looking sleepy again. Oh, my. I am. <laughs> it's chilly. Dawn breaks on the second morning in the lab. The participants have now been awake for 48 hours and are feeling the strain. Good morning. But help is at hand. This is Kate Marlowe, the country's toughest motivational coach. If anyone can inject some energy into tired bodies, she can. But not all of her students seem keen to learn. 
what I would like to do this morning is some work with you. First of all, to help you cope with the state you're now at. So some nice breathing things. Some things to get your brain working. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm just going to give you a round of applause. I'll waste our time. Um, okay, so uh, get some oxygen going around and some things to help you focus your attention. The first exercise is designed to invigorate their minds with a spot of facial gymnastics. Look to the left, centre, right, centre, left, centre, right. Centre, down to the right, centre, up to the left, centre, down to the right, centre, okay, and look up to the right, centre, down to the left, centre, okay. But in spite of expert guidance, fatigue is finally catching up with tough guy Dean. Stretching out all of these. <laughs> Are you okay? What happened? <laughs> right. Huh? Right. Are you okay? Yeah. Undaunted, Dean rejoins the group. Are you all right now? I keep on seeing things like yeah. running past me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm nearly, nearly passing out here. I'm telling you. And yes, it hits all of the same. Yeah, standing up is very hard because I feel myself going backwards and forwards. At okay. The moment. Certainly, the eye movement my eyes is quite difficult. Feel so heavy. So yeah. Going up and down. Oh, it's quite yeah. Yeah. As they clock up the waking hours, the participants are trying every trick in the book in the battle with their eyelids. With the exercise only serving to tire them out even more, we're beginning to see new and more extreme symptoms of sleep deprivation. Trying to decipher when things have happened is really difficult. It's getting hard now. You saying I did a video diary yesterday is confusing because I thought I didn't do one yesterday and I did one the day before, but I probably wasn't even here the day before, was I? Because I've only been here two days. <laughs> is it two days? As the edges of reality become blurred, some are seeing their first hallucinations. Short-term memory loss is common, and the powers of communication are failing them. I don't know what's happened. Just all of a sudden, it's just like, it's everything fancy, just yeah. seems a bit really, like, weird. 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 You're right, I was I'm drifting into dreams, you know what I mean, while I was away. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's where hallucinations come from. It's yeah. when your dreams overlap into yeah. reality. Yeah. We were in this room, the medical room, and I saw just a big flash of light just on my left. And I actually no. thought it was real until I realized, wait a minute, that yeah. doesn't just happen. After that, I was sitting on my own, and this black kind of thing came flying by my knee, just literally just flew, flew across. Then I was lying down on one of the couches, and I think it was Claire. Claire was kind of, she was talking to someone, she was standing sort of in front of me, and I could see her jeans. and. Her jeans kind of became a picture and then came out. Earlier today, Chris requested to see Gareth, the shattered psychiatrist. And I started completely sort of losing bearing. I didn't know where I was. My emotions were just flying out of control. Um, I couldn't stay up. I was finding it really difficult. I, I never expected. I, I was so close to losing it. Mm -hmm. I've never been that close to losing when it you say, When you say losing it, what do you mean? <sighs> Just losing control. I was looking at you and you stood up there with him and his face went completely yellow. I saw her lips move and I yeah. heard the words and I said, what? When they looked back at him and it was normal, then looked back at you and his face went completely yellow again. You... Loads of things just go through your head. Um, it's all, it's like a, you know, um, M25 motorway. It's going through your head so quick and... It's, it's all jumbled up, really. Started hitting pretty low, low kind of feeling um, about f four hours ago, I suppose. And I've, I haven't really snapped out of it yet. I'm feeling very dizzy and out of it and a little bit emotional. I just can't go on like this first. I can't do this for, a, for that much. You might not be here for a week. You never know. Might I be can't do this for, like, for very long. I keep forgetting what, what I'm doing and where I am and why I'm here and stuff. Okay. Everything's just sort of like going... Blurry, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's not nothing I've ever experienced before. 
Oh, poor babbies. Okay, joining me now are two people who will be helping us understand some of the mayhem in our sleepy contestants' mind. Dr. Gareth Smith, the shattered psychiatrist, and Neil Stanley, sleep, shattered sleep expert. <laughs> Gary, welcome. You You've earned your money already today, yeah, there, haven't you? <laughs> okay, Neil, I'm going to start with you. Um, looks tough in there, has to, has to be said. Um, what are the big things you spotted? I mean, basically, um, some of them are starting, Lucy and Chris are starting to show sort of slightly hysterical type behaviour. I mean, they're finding it very, very difficult. And we know in sleep deprivation, you, your, your reactions to situations are sort of slightly heightened. So mm. they're, they're finding it tough. Um, but the others, I mean, Dean is also finding it tough. I mean, the, these sort of claiming to be hallucinations, they're, they're just sort of visual events. I mean, it's like when you see something out the corner of your eye, rationally, you, you know that's not a hallucination, but these guys have... So it becomes more heightened. More heightened. They believe it's something more important. But as time goes on, their, their hallucinations are going to become proper sort of narrative hallucinations where their dreams are overlaying their reality, so they will actually sort of have proper hallucinations rather than just sort of... How long do they last for, those the, the sort of the proper the ones with the they, they can, you know, a couple of minutes. I mean, they can <laughs> actually, you know, like the adverts in, in the middle of a programme, they, they would become slightly real to them. Mm -hmm. OK, we've also seen some people nodding off. Uh, we can take a look at Sal now. Let's take a look at that. Let's suppose that these are two congruent triangles. This one, well, again, I'll draw something slightly different. Now, to be very fair, that was in the middle of a lecture about triangles <laughs> and agriculture. <laughs> so, um, was she awake or asleep there? Was, uh, I mean, it was very much on the sort of transition. I mean, anything more than a long blink in this sort of situation, and you'd have to be thinking she's going into sleep. Mm. A microsleep. A yeah. microsleep. And, you know, a microsleep, it, you know, driving a car at 60 miles an hour, you only need four seconds to go off the road with your eyes closed. So, I mean, that's quite dangerous, and it's lucky she's in a controlled environment. Yeah, sure. OK, so is what we're doing here safe? Yes, I mean, they're being monitored. They're being, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have given them sleep today when we saw that they were getting a bit, um, you know, close to hitting the, the wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, you know, there's Gareth on board all the time watching them. So, yes, it's safe. I mean, it's tough, but safe. Yeah, OK. Now, Gareth, you've been watching all the action from the lab. You talk to them individually every day. So, yep. talk us through the group. How, how's it developing? There seems to be two clear leaders coming forward in the group of people who, who put themselves forward as leaders. Chris and Dean are in competition with one another. They're trying to be the alpha male, you know, the, the guy in charge. Chris's friends are behind you, OK? So yeah, I watch what you're saying right now, OK? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's remind ourselves um, of what happened earlier today when they were discussing who should take the you snooze, you lose challenge for a bit yeah. of evidence. OK, so who here thinks they could really do it and does feel like they can do it? Yeah, right, OK, we've got three. OK, so you guys are going to draw straws, OK? One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Sorry, one minute, one minute. Seriously, seriously. One minute. Only, only go for it if you believe that's that what I'm you saying. can do it. Yeah. That's why yeah, I said. Because uh, that's a grand or, or maybe four lose. grand you're going to lose. Uh, the prosecution rests, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, it, it, bear in mind, you know, they're, they're trying to survive till Saturday with as little sleep as possible. So. Is that an advantage to be that kind of dogmatic person? I mean, does that help you focus? Or well, it, it, seems it, helping, it seems to be helping Dean focus. He's absolutely sure he's going to win, win the game. But Chris, as we saw in the clip, has peaked a bit too soon. He, he really, last night, in the middle of last night, ran into a brick wall, mm -hmm. just feeling really tired, incredibly emotional, and Dean was really beginning to get in his nerves. Is that what you saw when you met him yes. earlier on? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And also just observing it. So, so what type of person do you think is going to win, then? I think it's probably going to be a slow burner that's going to win this. I think you might find the surprise being somebody like Craig, who maybe comes through, who's just sort of been the same consistently all the way, or maybe one of the girls. I think people that are kind of quite full on, they might burn out. So is it about conserving sort of physical and mental energy? Yeah, absolutely. You have to pace yourself. It's like running a marathon. Neil? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, it, it's probably going to be the person that you least expect who's just got the sort so of it's mental like a willpower. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <it's> like <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, and and who, who are the people that are going to sort of flake it, are going to wig out? I mean, do, you th do you think anyone's going to walk? No, I don't think. I think £100,000 is a lot to keep someone in a house, to be honest. I mean, we're ready to pull them if we feel medically they're not doing well. But, uh, <laughs> That'll be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. I with the butterfly net. But I don't, I, don't think, um, I don't think anyone will walk. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much for your science. Next, we'll be finding out how much is left in that prize fund and I'll be revealing to the contestants who's up for tonight's Elimination Challenge. Join us after the break. See you then.
Welcome back to the toughest game show on TV, Shattered. Through there are nine people who are battling against sore eyes, heavy limbs, mixed up brains in an attempt to stay awake till Saturday and claim a prize of up to £100,000. Now, whoever's still standing at that point will have been sleep deprived for a full 183 hours. That's eight whole days and seven whole nights. You're right to exhale behind me. OK, uh, when they last got a night's sleep, it was the Christmas holidays, which means now, on Monday, at 10.30, they've been sleep-deprived for 63 and a half hours. Now, as you know, every time they fall asleep illegally, which means closing their eyes for 10 seconds or more, we deduct £1,000 from the prize fund. So, has anyone been sleeping illegally and losing the group money? I'm now going to tell them how much money is left in the prize fund and, more importantly, who's up for tonight's elimination. Ooh. Let's hope they're expecting you. Anyway, I said to him, I said... Good evening, participants. Good evening. No one swore. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> How are we? All right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, excellent stuff. Now, I'm here for two reasons. First, to tell you how much money is left in the prize fund. And second, who is up for tonight's elimination? I just want to ask you a couple of questions first, see how you're doing. Craig, you said earlier you thought you had enough? Yeah, that's correct. How are you feeling now? Um, fine, actually. I'm wide awake, and uh, thank goodness I didn't go, so... Are you <laughs> ever thinking about, I mean, thinking about walking or not? I, yeah, I was very close. I just had enough. I mean, I was absolutely shattered, okay. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to get out of here. Okay, Sam, after 63 hours, you said... This is, you said this is very tough, right? And yeah, we appreciate that. Is this, is this as tough as you, as you thought it would be? I didn't put any premonition to how tough it would be. But, um, yeah, it's tough, but I'm rooting all the way. OK. On to the money. Because it's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> <laughs> um, hands up if you think you slept. Anyone at all? No. For more than, for more than ten, seconds. I, I more than I ten seconds. I don't think I said no. no. OK, no. Not no. no. <laughs> Anyone noticed anyone sleeping? Jimmy, have you noticed anyone sleeping since you've arrived? Uh, I know I, I know what you're talking about. You you went like this and I saw you and I prodded you. It you was did. half a second. Okay. Okay. So no. Well, no you remember, thing. there is one key rule to shattered. You don't fall asleep illegally. Because every time you do, £1,000 is deducted from your prize fund. Now, we're defining sleep as closing your eyes for more than 10 seconds. So this time yesterday, you were playing for 100 grand. You all still think you're playing for 100 grand, yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely. Let's take a look. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. I think that someone actually listened, listened to the wisdom of generation. He's got all the different drainage boards. <laughs> Over the years, going back skin. right to the 18th <laughs> century, when large parts of Lincolnshire were drained, yeah, these awesome. drainage boards have managed the drainage. They understand how the flood tables work and all that sort of thing. And... Uh, I think there is a panel of experts judging it. We, you say you were picking your skin? I'm looking down and it looks like my eyelids are closed, but I'm peeling here and I was picking my skin. If I was to sleep, my head he would actually asleep. go like oh, that. Disgusting. I think I saw you wake sleep. up. No, no I, I wasn't. Look at you, look. <laughs> Straight away, starting a fight down there. Behave yourself. OK, well, it's been counted as one illegal sleep yesterday oh. at 2 p.m. Oh. Which oh. is one thousand pounds. But bear in mind, 63 hours, you've still got 99,000 pounds. Congratulations. Yeah. OK. You have, though, had a few near misses. Uh, Sam, we did clock you <coughs> at six seconds. Mm -hmm. So we are watching, OK? But only one person still standing Saturday night will win the money, and uh, each night one of you is going to have to leave. So on to the eliminations. Whew. The participants um, who face tonight's elimination will be the two people who showed the most deterioration in this morning's scientific tests. This is what they were all about. <laughs> Each day our participants take four scientific tests. The results are compared against their own score from the previous day to see how much they've deteriorated. These tests are designed to uh, investigate those aspects of performance that are affected by sleep deprivation. Things like time perception, short-term memory loss, reaction time and information processing. 
The Stroop test is designed to measure the way sleep deprivation affects information processing. So what you have is the word of a colour coming up in that colour and you have to say whether it's a match or a mismatch. The clock test is designed to measure time perception. The time perception is something that goes when you're sleep deprived and it's just the ability to mentally measure time. And so the participants just have to press a button and press the button again after they think one minute has elapsed. The short-term memory test shows you the way that people cannot encode sequences when they're tired. The reaction time test is measuring how sleep deprivation affects their reflexes. Yesterday, Jonathan, Ellen, Chris and Claire S. showed the biggest deterioration in the tests and went through to the elimination challenge. But 24 hours on, all that could have changed. Okay, we now have the results of today's tests, okay? <laughs> Tonight, two of you are going to be up for elimination. The two people who have shown the biggest decrease in performance in the scientific tests are Jimmy and Salma. This. So, tonight you're going to be taking part in the Shattered oh, no. Elimination Challenge, yeah. which will test your short-term memory and concentration. About this. Both of you are among the first thing, mm -hmm. both of which are among the first things to be uh, affected as you get more tired, okay? So it's all about short-term memory and your concentration. Short time to prepare yourselves, so I'm going to leave you to it, alright? Good luck. You guys, have we just talked about this all day. Jimmy, Jimmy. You have to do it. Do you want to do the bitter end, mate? Yeah, you too. No, you too. Take your time, concentrate. I'm going to do the same. Jimmy, Jimmy. 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 Jimmy, Jimmy.
beyond. Our contestants have now been sleep deprived for three days and are about to enter the third night tonight. And it's only Monday. You've got to make it to Saturday to have a chance of claiming £99,000 and counting. Jimmy and Salma are out to go head to head in tonight's elimina elimination challenge. One of them will soon be going home. The challenge tonight is Electro Doors. It's designed to test short term memory and concentration. If you're wondering why it's called Electro Doors, it's because they're electrified, like this one. <laughs> Thanks. It's time to call our participants through. So, <clears throat> Jimmy and Salma, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Will you now please join me in the elimination room? The rules are very simple. To complete the challenge, you must find the correct route through these rows of doors. Only one out of every three will open. The other two are locked, OK? We're going this way. Very important. <laughs> to open the door, you must push the handle, OK? Twist and push. Every time you try a door that doesn't open, you must leave along the outside and go back to the start line. You will have two minutes. The person who makes it furthest or completes the course in the shortest time will return to the lab. The other one will go home and to bed. The fewer mistakes you make, the quicker it will be to get to the end. But for health and safety reasons, you cannot run. You have to walk, OK? I don't mind that Olympic-style walking, but you've got to walk. <laughs> now, you know you'll have made a mistake for two very simple reasons. Firstly, the door won't open. Secondly, the handle will give you a minor electric shock. Sorry. <laughs> Secondly, the <laughs> handle will give you a minor electric shock. So, for the people at home, it's very easy, uh, because the correct doors, the ones that aren't electrified, are marked on the top. Timmy, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling sad that I'm up, I'm up against mm -hmm. one of the finest people in the house, and that's the truth, so... so it's, um, I'm very disappointed about that. Sam, Likewise. Okay. I've, I've been anticipated it, but yeah, really sad that I'm up against Jimmy, but... Very diplomatic, but I like yeah, it. It's, true. it's, I know true. it's true. It's really true. <laughs> Jimmy, you've been selected to go first. Sam, obviously you can't watch, so we're going to take you away to my room. Okay. Uh, no messing it up, all right? Yeah. So, if you would, please, OK? <laughs> OK, Jimmy, you know what you have to do. Remember, if you pick a wrong door, you have to go back to the beginning and start again, all right? Take your place up there at the start line. Studio audience, encouragement's good, but you cannot cheat. You cannot tell them which door to go through, all right? Remember, no running. You've got two minutes. The time starts on my whistle, mate, all right? OK. In three, two... Come on! Come on, Jimmy! First one right, second one wrong, so... Here we go. Very well. Very well. You're a very, very good time, man. I really remember the way. That's what we want. There's no handle there. Come round, it's okay. <laughs> okay, we'll go back. Okay. Okay. The handles are falling apart. Will you remember the way? Start again. <laughs> Jimmy, stop dropping that handle. What do you remember the way? Oh my god. Back to the start again. Jimmy, you just got over a minute. Take your time, you've got a minute left. That's my beautiful girlfriend, oh, Lucy. Been, it would have been even more impressive if you didn't know. <laughs> OK, 
You clock back, my friend, in one minute 19, OK? So, that's obviously the time to beat. So, congratulations. If you, you would, there? go and uh, sit over there for us, OK? Yeah. Yeah. But don't sit down next to your girlfriend. OK, um, <clears throat> next up. One minute, 19 to beat. Salma, will you please come and join me in the elimination room? <laughs> hey, Salma. Hi. OK, you know the rules. Yeah. Pick a wrong door. You must return to the lab and start again. OK. You cannot run, OK? Quickest way is obviously to remember the correct route, but we don't want you running, OK? Mm -hmm. You have one minute 19 to beat. Got to get under one minute 19 to go back in the lab, okay? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll put the clock at one minute 19 and I'll let you know how you're going, all right? Take your place on the start, please. You're going to go on my whistle, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me just check that dodgy second door. Watch out for that door handle in here, all right? Okay. Time starts on my whistle. In three, two... <laughs> First one, no problem. Come on, Draw on one. Back to this. Okay, you go. Okay. Okay, back to the start again. Five seconds left. Congratulations. How are you feeling, right? Uh, well, it's a bit of sweet. Good, sure it? thing. So much. Okay. Such a great person. Congratulations. Just a lovely chance to win £99,000. Yeah. Get back in the lab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get to you in a minute. All right, I'm just. She did really well, and I went first and I got 1 in 19. She managed to get, like, yeah, we four heard. of the doors. Yeah, we guessed four of the doors. Hey, Han. Hi. Lost tonight. Better weights. Good thing, bad thing. It's fine. It's a fantastic guy to lose okay. to. What happened, though, at the very end there? I don't know. Okay. I just had it all psyched well, up. commiseration. Yeah. You enjoyed the experience? Absolutely amazing. Best time of my life. Emma, thank you very much. OK. Time for bed now. And that's your lot for tonight. You can switch over to E4 now to join Salma with Edith Bowman on Absolutely Shattered. And, of course, we'll be back tomorrow night uh, at 10. Towards the eight remaining participants who have been steep deprived for 87 hours. The madness really begins. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, well, I'm paying for to It's like, um, <coughs> I don't know, bittersweet to me. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. definitely. It is. You can, especially with just two of you going forward here as well. Well, it's only you. Now we have the lovely evening. <laughs> only you. It's true, actually. Oh, no. It's so good, but it's so it's bad. Oh, live show. You just don't know what to do. <laughs> From now on, it's really, it's like, these so it's just us girls. exciting. Yeah. Because... Got to get rid of some of these things. Three girls left. 
That is not. Yes, we're getting to know each other so maybe, much more every maybe day. Maybe this is some it's kind it's of. Um, bad. Every time I oh, maybe no, females I don't angry. take sleep deprivation as well as males do. No. What? No. A well, you never know. It hasn't been tested. Well, I mean, there's things. Well, no. You know, How things, do you know? Things Why that not? Things that things between the nasty and the You know, I want you to win. Promise me that you're going to win. You know, she's really, really kind. I think, you know, me and Sam were... She was a really good motivator as well. Really it's going to be difficult Yeah, she, she was, actually, so wasn't she? Like, with yeah. the kids and yeah, the, the kids. Like, she was yeah. a bit of a leader, wasn't she? Was I thought she was, she was a bit of a leader. Always smile her face. Yeah. Well. <coughs> That's why well. you're both amazing, like, motivators. Oh. Yeah, well. She's lost the mummy. She was a bit hard. Yeah. Oh Still, God, you know, look on the bright competition side. goes on. She gets to go and see her kid, doesn't she? 64 days. Yeah. 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 Good. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then there were eight. You'd be dead like six hundred. I'm going to say we have eye bags down.